So there's a 100 point essay by Alan Levenovitz about sugar. For your intro, I wrote it out for you, but the things you need to know are the author's name, the title, which you will always find in bold at the beginning, as well as the thesis, which comes at the end in this box. And it always starts out the same way, write an essay in which you explain how the author builds an argument to persuade his audience that, and then everything that follows is the thesis. This is critical here because the thesis is against the dangers of sugar. We are frozen. Uh, we're saying that the dangers of sugar consumption may be overstated. People have complained about how dangerous sugar is to such an extent that it's overblown. When it comes to evidence, uh, one way to approach it would be to use evidence like this. More research discounts this idea than supports it. This is saying that sugar does not cause hyperactivity. So in the past, in the you know, 1974, there was a doctor that said sugar does cause hyperactivity. But more research has come out that disproves that. And that's there at the end of paragraph four. It's a great piece of evidence that fits the thesis. Another piece of evidence you could use, here on the back, at the end of paragraph eight. Uh, we're looking at some ethos here. We see a guy from Stanford. He's an epidemiologist, so that's a pretty fancy degree. And the last line here is some good evidence. He says, for many current scientific fields, claimed research findings may often be simply accurate measures of the prevailing bias. So this is saying that the science research is affected by bias and it can't be trusted. The evidence here is that bias led to sugar being blamed. That could be the cornerstone of your argument, these two pieces of evidence, that some of the things sugar has been blamed for, such as hyperactivity, not true. And some of the research may be more affected by bias than actual science. Another approach you could take on the evidence path would be to say that even though current experts like nutritionists, medical professionals, and the majority of the voting public are against sugar, they have learned this from our nation's history of demonizing sugar. And you could go into the past where in the 60s they talked about sugar leads to the criminal mind and further back people lived in mortal fear of sexuality just how they did sugar. So the idea there is that while current experts may be against sugar, the reason is not because of the science, it's because of hundreds of years of people being against sugar. And it's important that you phrase it that way. If you just say that experts such as medical professionals say that sugar is bad, and it is, and people are afraid of sugar, you will be contradicting the thesis. You will be arguing in a different direction. Let's talk reasoning. Reasoning is when you, the author provides an interpretation of facts, such as here in paragraph three. A particularly good line here is that crusaders have been warning about the evil effects of sugar for hundreds of years with no positive effect on our health. That's the logic. You would think if sugar was so dangerous and people warned about it, well, what would happen? People would cut out sugar and their health would improve. But that didn't happen. And that didn't happen over and over. So they talk about we may be doomed to continue repeating this cycle. The cycle of being afraid of sugar, not eating sugar, but nothing good coming from it. On the back, some reasoning at the end of paragraph nine. Uh, here they're talking about our history of bias causes us to jump the gun on sugar due to moral furor. People turn sugar into a moral issue. Is sugar right or wrong? But instead, we should be looking at the science. Is it healthy or unhealthy? Is it okay in certain quantities versus different quantities? Should we avoid sugar only with pre-existing conditions? But that's not how we have looked at it. We have looked at it, is it right or wrong? And people have associated it with religion and hyper kids and all of these other problems and blamed sugar and said, sugar is bad. Which causes you to jump to conclusions. If you're gonna do some sort of analysis, you could always point to, think about in your family, at a birthday party, has some Uncle, aunt, grandpa, gr grandma warned, don't give that child any more sugar. They're going to be hyper. 
That's the bias coming in. That's our cultural wisdom that has been passed down to us, but not the science. As far as style goes, this is probably the easiest section for this article. Uh, you could identify some of the negative words. They call sugar evil, toxic, poisonous. And these have some very negative connotations. And if you associate those with sugar, people will be against sugar. But they're not necessarily true. There's some hyperbole there. Uh, you could talk about the word crusader. It's mentioned multiple times. And you could mention the historical allusion, who the crusaders were, and how they fought for hundreds of years for what they believed in without really changing much, similar to the people against sugar. If that one's a little bit more challenging to explain, you could also focus on the fire and brimstone approach, which is here in paragraph seven. This is that very much, you're going to hell if you do bad things. If you eat sugar, bad things will happen to you, or you'll be a bad person. Good so morning, it's a fear Jeff approach. Calling Let's wrap this video up quick. All students Last thing would be real science. M through R to the Implying that the rest of the science is not real. M through R.